Good day and God bless you. Welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. I just want to thank you for once again joining us and for participating with us in this venture. And I pray that the Lord would bless you even as we would go through the overview and the reading today. I pray that it would be a blessing to you. We're still busy in the book of Deuteronomy, but today we close out the book uh, and we're going to be doing chapters 32, 33 and 34. And then we're also doing Psalm chapter 91. Uh, speaking about the refuge of the Lord. But let's get straight into it. In chapter 32, we see that Moses' song is recorded, which ministers of the perfection and the grace of God. Now, this is so wonderful. And when you go through the song, really take in the majesty of the Lord. The children of Israel are admonished in the song because of their idolatry and their wickedness. But the Lord will punish them to humble them before the Lord. Very important that we see that and that we understand that. And then to look at it in the light of our own lives, to understand that, yes, God is merciful. Yes, God is faithful, but God is also just. And so then to apply that in our lives as well. But then we see that God will restore his people because of his own grace, because of the promise that he made to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. That promise will always be fulfilled and he will bring his people back. And that's important as well in our reflection of our walk with the Lord. The people are then exhorted to set their hearts upon the Lord and to, and to really focus on the song and to set their hearts upon it and to understand the Lord in this. And then God sends Moses up to Mount Nebo to see the promised land and to die there. Then we get to chapter 33 and in chapter 33 we see that it is an exhortation to the majesty of God again the amazing power of the Lord. And then we see that in this chapter that the 12 tribes of Israel are blessed and what a beautiful blessing that is pronounced over the, over the 12 tribes. And then the excellency of Israel is expressed in this chapter. Very beautiful chapter, amazing. Even though we know that the Israelites fell so, so, so far short of where they should be and yet the excellency of Israel is expressed in this chapter. Then we get to chapter 34, and in chapter 34, we see that Moses from Mount Nebo views the promised land. And then we read about the peculiar death and burial of Moses, the servant of God. His death was very peculiar in that Moses was, was still strong and still in control of all of his faculties. His eyes did not dim, none of that. But he could not go on. Because the Lord could not allow him to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. When we get to tomorrow's reading and going into the book of Joshua, I'll just give a bit of overview on that as well. Then the people take 30 days of mourning for Moses. It's strange because it seemed like the, people's, the, the people were intent on driving Moses mad for the most part. And, and yet he was such a, an important figure to them. He was like a father to them. And so... Even though they drove him mad for, for the most part, they still loved him and they still took that time for mourning the death of Moses. Then we see that Joshua succeeds Moses and then a testimonial of Moses is given for all generations. Take note of that testimonial. There was no man like Moses that God spoke to face to face in this way. It was just such a beautiful, a beautiful testimonial to know that the Lord used this man in such a great way. And the Lord then even took the time to bury the, the body of Moses. And, and we'll read that when we come to the book of Jude. We're going to go into that in quite a bit more detail. But just so beautiful to see that. And that's the close of the book of Deuteronomy. Wonderful book. An amazing book. And then we're going to go now into, into the book of Joshua. Uh, from tomorrow but just amazing to see this close of the Pentateuch how beautiful it was from the history to the law uh, we see the plan of God revealed there in these books but then we're going to go to Psalm chapter 91 still today and this is a song of uh, of refuge it is a song acknowledging the might and the glory of God and we are told about a strong and a mighty God who gives protection to his own by giving his angels charge over them he is a god who gives joy comfort and shelter to those who put their trust in him 
Please take note especially that this is a prophecy of the Messiah that would come. We all probably know this chapter so well, but it's just such a beautiful chapter. And I love verse 4 where it says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. It is just such a beautiful chapter. So really take it in and really, uh, really just meditate on this chapter as well. On these chapters that we go through today, I pray that it would be a blessing to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you. May He give you peace. God bless you. Chapter 32 Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste, howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock. Butter of kine, and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs, and rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat, and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, 
that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter, their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I whet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Hoshea the son of Nun. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all Israel. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do, all the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. And through this thing ye shall prolong your days in the land, whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord spake unto Moses that selfsame day, saying, Get thee up into this mountain Abarim, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho. And behold the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession. And die in the mount whither thou goest up, and be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered unto his people. Because ye trespassed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin, because ye sanctified me not, in the midst of the children of Israel. Yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go thither unto the land which I give the children of Israel. Chapter 33 And this is the blessing wherewith Moses the man of God blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand. And they sat down at thy feet. Every one shall receive of thy words. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. And he was king in Jeshurun when the heads of the people and the tribes of Israel were gathered together. Let Reuben live and not die, and let not his men be few. And this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him unto his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him, and be thou an help to him from his enemies. And of Levi he said, Let thy Thummim and thy Urim be with thy Holy One, whom thou didst prove at Massa, and with whom thou didst strive at the waters of Meribah, who said unto his father and to his mother, I have not seen him. Neither did he acknowledge his brethren, nor knew his own children, for they have observed thy word, and kept thy covenant. They shall teach Jacob thy judgments and Israel thy law. They shall put incense before thee and hold burnt sacrifice upon thine altar. Bless, Lord, his substance and accept the work of his hands. 
smite through the loins of them that rise against him and of them that hate him, that they rise not again. And of Benjamin he said, The beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. And of Joseph he said, Blessed of the Lord be his land, for the precious things of heaven, for the dew, and for the deep that coucheth beneath, and for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun, and for the precious things put forth by the moon, and for the chief things of the ancient mountains, and for the precious things of the lasting hills, and for the precious things of the earth and fullness thereof, and for the good will of him that dwelt in the bush. Let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph, and upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. His glory is like the first fling of his bullock, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns. With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth. They are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. And of Zebulun he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in thy going out, and Issachar in thy tents. They shall call the people unto the mountain. There they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness, for they shall suck of the abundance of the seas and of treasures hid in the sand. And of Gad he said, Blessed be he that enlargeth Gad. He dwelleth as a lion, and teareth the arm with the crown of the head. And he provided the first part for himself, because there in a portion of the Lord giver was he seated. And he came with the heads of the people, he executed the justice of the Lord and his judgments with Israel. And of Dan he said, Dan is a lion's whelp, he shall leap from Bashan. And of Naphtali he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full with the blessing of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south. And of Asher he said, Let Asher be blessed with children, let him be acceptable to his brethren, and let him dip his foot in oil. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass, and as thy days, so shall thy strength be. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel! Who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. Chapter 34 and Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo to the top of Pisgah that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan, and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah unto the utmost sea, and the south, and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, unto Zoar. And the Lord said unto him, this is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over thither. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. And Moses was an hundred and twenty years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, in all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh, and to all his servants, and to all his land, and in all that mighty hand, and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. The end of the fifth book of Moses, called Deuteronomy. Psalm 91 he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High 
shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation.